I um, went to my boss and said to him, you know, I'm going to go do this crazy thing and I'm going to start this, uh, this company selling books online. And the conclusion of that was this, he said, you know, this actually sounds like a really good idea to me. But it sounds like it would be a better idea for somebody who didn't already have a good job. And he convinced me to think about it for 48 hours before making a final decision. And so I went away and, and, and was trying to find the right framework in which to make that kind of big decision. And, you know, I'd already talked to my wife about this and she was very supportive and said, look, you know, uh, you can count me in 100%, um, whatever you want to do. You know, it's true. She had married this kind of, you know, fairly stable guy in a stable career path, and now he wanted to go do this crazy thing, but she was 100% supportive. So it really was a decision that I had to make for myself. And the, and the framework I found, which made the decision incredibly easy, was... Uh, what what I called, which only a nerd would call, a regret minimization framework. So I wanted to project myself forward to age 80 and say, okay, now I'm looking back on my life. I want to have minimized the number of regrets I have. And you know, uh, I knew that when I was 80, I was not going to regret having tried this. I was not going to regret having wanted, you know, trying to participate in this thing called the internet that I thought was going to be a really big deal. I knew that if I failed, I wouldn't regret that. But I knew the one thing I might regret is not ever having tried. And I knew that that would haunt me every day. Um, and so when I thought about it that way, it was an incredibly easy decision. Um, and I think that's a very good, it's, it's, if you can project yourself out to age 80 and sort of think, what will I think at that time? It gets you away from some of the daily pieces of confusion. You know, I left uh, this Wall Street firm in the middle of the year. When you do that, you walk away from your annual bonus. And that's the kind of thing that in the short term can confuse you. But if you think about the long term, uh, then you can really make good life decisions that you won't regret later. And I think, for me, the right way to make that kind of very personal decision, because those decisions are personal. They're not like data-driven business decisions. They're, they are, you know, what does your heart say? And for me, it was, I could, the best way to think about it was to project myself forward to age 80 and say, look, when I'm 80 years old, I want to have minimized the number of regrets that I have. I don't want to be 80 years old in a quiet moment of reflection, thinking back over my life and, and cataloging a bunch of major regrets. And I think that regrets are biggest regrets in most cases. You can murder somebody, okay, you'd regret that. But in most cases, <laughs> our biggest regrets turn out to be acts of omission. It's paths not taken, and they haunt us. We wonder, what would have happened? I loved that person, and I never told him. And then they married somebody else. I, did, you know, I didn't do this. And so that's the frame of mind that I put myself in. And, I, and once I did that, once I thought about it that way, it was immediately obvious to me. I knew that when I'm 80, I would never regret trying this thing that I was super excited about and failing. If it failed, fine. I would be very proud of the fact when I'm 80 that I tried. And I also um, knew that I, it would always haunt me if I didn't try. And so that would be a regret. It would be a 100% chance of a regret if I didn't try and basically a 0% chance of regret if I tried and failed. So I think that's a useful metric for any important life decision.